and welcome to the light read read this december 12th how's it going greg good it's actually december 23rd isn't it time is an illusion <laughs> lunchtime doubly so happy hanukkah everybody <laughs> that's it that's better all right all right so Today's this episode is... is brought to you by keystone right yeah keystone uh check out their pir high base sensor Ooh, nice dim levels nice good standby periods keystone's coming up on 75 years aren't they yeah 70... i believe so 75 years of making light easy that's right uh, all right, but just jump into the news. China is dropping import tariffs on 859 types of things. OLEDs okay. and semiconductor testers are in there. Is there any other LED? Did you? I haven't dug into it enough, but uh, I this literally just cracked like four and a half minutes ago. So okay. I, I I need to find like a full list on like you know the Ministry of Finance somewhere, right? That's already been translated. Sure. That should be fun. Another uh, tariff reduction. We we were threatened by it. Now it's going away. So who knows? That's why going back to when we did our original podcast, I don't really pay attention to the tariff. Just yeah. let them all figure it out. And what happens, happens. Let's not worry about it anymore. I mean, the only thing you can count on is uncertainty, right? That's right. That's all we get out of it. All right. Mine, Apple, Google, and Amazon partner with Zigbee Alliance. So that's telling you that they're getting into... What, lighting protocols is for smart home products? Well, anything? this is finally like making sure that, oh, this thing's only talks to Alexa. What will I do now? Right? Sure. Sorting out that that interoperability issue that, yeah, no one likes. No one likes Yeah, that. and that's something that needs to happen in lighting if connected lighting's ever going to take off. If they, people's got to get together, come up with a system that everybody can agree on. I mean, if well, if Google's back in Zigbee, that's probably probably a big tipping point yeah i would say so satco sues sale semiconductor over carrier trap patent satco believes the u.s patent office issued rights and error satco getting after it we we're oh, just yeah. out there great company big company but you know somebody's messing with a patent they got to get after them. do what they have to all right so manchester university questions whether how disruptive blue light is to sleep now they ran a test on mice uh, which shows that brightness was the key to melatonin production, not necessarily color temperature. And because it's on mice, that's actually good this time, because uh, melatonin production is the same across all mammals. Well, now we just have to test it on humans, though, to be safe for sure, or to know for sure, right? Is uh, Oh, well, uh, spoilers for like nine stories from now. Uh, uh -huh. We just got to, uh, some guys in Berlin figured out that we just got to keep everybody under six lux at night. Six lots. Well, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. We're getting somewhere then. Let's start with the mice, get to Germany, and see what we come up with. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, Max Light seeks another, if you can scroll back up on yeah. Sorry. some of it. Sorry. Right. Seeks another. Yeah, Invalidation. I don't know how to say that. Yeah. Sorry. Super Invalidation <laughs> of. Un oh, God. What am I spelling? Uh, so Max Light is suing Jiang Xing a third time. This is their third IPR on LED tubes. Yeah, I think super lighting does a lot of manufacturing for companies over here and, um, you know, that have different name brands, obviously, but yeah, it's like so Max Light's getting after them. All right. Uh, NEMA and the ALA sue California over the their 2020 efficiency standard. So uh, California was going to be basically rolling ahead with the DOE's plan, whether the DOE cared or not. So this is over your... Uh, candelabra bees and your uh, globe types hmm. that's interesting that they're going after the the state on that getting after them trying to get it so they can sell incandescents and halogens again we we're out in california i know they still do to some degree but i don't know about the state ban get it figured out yeah uh global lighting association elects first executive committee i'm not sure who the global lighting association is they are they're brand new. They're, they won't even be official till March next year. There you go. And what's their purpose? Do they state yet? Uh, they, the new president has sort of a general mission statement about something, you know. Getting, sure, sure. Yeah, ISO across the board, efficiency, blah, 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 better shit. <laughs> They've got a plan. All right. Yeah. Uh, University of Louisville 
to give uh, the Renewable Energy Award to Shuji Nakamura. So the Lee Ann Cole Prize will be presented to him uh, next year when he's given it to Louisville. Uh, it's just university runs the prize, right? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Well deserved. DLC released revised draft of performance standards for commercial LED. So SSL, the version 5.0, has the raised efficiency requirements by as high as an or by an average of 11 percent, and some are as high as 23 percent. So, looking for another round of DLC. What are they going after? Trying to get more efficient lighting again, and I know they're trying to get into the quality game and the productivity and everything that we're hoping to that will take off someday. And I think that's starting to come out, but right now it looks like it's efficiency focused. Yeah. All right. So episode one fourteen of the get a grip on lighting podcast that's from the floor of city lights in san francisco <laughs> talking about california yeah that was a good one yeah yeah no that was a nice showroom they had there and we had a great discussion with those guys so check that one out all right energy focus plans integrative smart retrofit line source confirmed in a development of newly patented control systems color tunable dimmable led lamps Energy focus is looking towards the future, and I think they've got some good ideas there. Yeah, full details sometime early next year. Mm -hmm. All right, getting back, mention it. They uh, some guys at IGB Berlin identified that by reading 1900 studies, uh, concluded and take correlating their data concluded that uh, you know if you want to keep your melatonin safe, keep your lux under six. It's low. It's low, low light. It's very low. Color temp doesn't matter. Yeah. All Color right. temp may not count. Okay. Light anchors modu modulates LEDs for augmented reality interface. So this what this can use there? so this can use existing LEDs. It just causes mm -hmm. them to flash. You point your phone camera at them, and then it displays more information. All right. Let's see what they can do. Yeah. Uh, NLB Forum uh, re has released a video of their panel on circadian lighting. NLB is Randy Reed's deal, and they do a good job there. Got yeah. a lot of good plans for the future as well. Uh, Keystone to move headquarters, distribution centers, new spaces, three times the size of their previous facility and only eight miles west of it. What does that tell you about Keystone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they need three times more space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's crazy because I was out there a couple of years ago and that was a relatively new move that they had. And so they're obviously doing the right thing. Yeah. So CIE has released a test method for OLED light sources. This is specific to photo and color metric requirements. CIE is uh, Europe's DLC in many ways. Mm -hmm. OLED uh, is something that I think can be coming around more in the future. So be ready for that. Yeah, like there's a lot of flat um, flat panel sort of luminaires that use OLEDs. Mm -hmm. IoT market value to reach 561 billion by 2022. That's uh, telling you that's where a lot of the focus is going, and now we just got to see the sales get there. But looks well, like I a think, lot of potential. Well, I think it's the real it's the retail space that's going to drive this. It's when it's when you know yeah. Target can find an an interesting way to spy on you. That that's when yeah. the money's going to happen. <laughs> that's right. All right. So Harold Haas is addressing some misconceptions about Li-Fi. Harold Haas, he invented it so he'd know what you're wrong about when it comes to Li-Fi. He's the father of Li-Fi. He's on episode something of the Get a Grip podcast. So check that 90 out. Ninety thing, eighty thing, ninety, eighty ish, ninety ish. Look it yeah. up. You'll find it. Just just look uh, for his name. <laughs> yeah stands out denver city council debate green code the code will mandate new construction projects to be net zero by 2035 live it to denver getting after it rotterdam installs the street light of the future uh this is a proof of concept unit uh downtown and it's got a 5g cell transmitter an electric vehicle charger a cctv camera an air quality mod monitor a modular slot that in that can include uh, say a payphone or uh, one of those like emergency defibrillators or some other useful thing and by coincidence still has an LED Cobra head on top 
Well, of course, there you go. But when you want to make it of the future, you see that, the part that sticks out to me is the modular slots for future features. I wonder what those are all about. But that's really what you need to do in lighting. If you're trying to make this work in the future, you need to have capabilities to have, I don't know if slots is the right term or something, but well, ability modules, to upgrade or change or add. Yeah, modules, I, sure. Yeah, something. Like, and I, I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, if you're talking about having smart utilities or smart smart features to a municipality, you kind of need an excuse to put a pole somewhere. So yeah. how many excuses for poles do you really have? Right. <laughs> uh, New York State announces $1.5 billion in efficiency programs. So they're actually a uh, seven-year initiative will improve state-owned facilities. That's a big chunk that they're putting towards it and that means there's a lot of opportunity in lighting in yeah. new york uh so uh smart energy decisions has recapped their accelerate philadelphia conference so that's a local energy efficiency projects and programs and talks uh looked like a few good speakers and some familiar names to me at least sure all right we'll check that out Hubble wins product innovation award. Hubble's getting after it and they're doing some architectural products, which they've always been real good with and looks like they've won an award there. Yeah. So a uh, biophilic classroom study reaches a conclusion. So in this case, they went to Baltimore, completely revamped one math classroom and left one math classroom the same. And it turns out that, uh, yeah, no, making a space pleasant to be in uh, improves your stress levels improves your grades, makes you like math. Did they were they able to say any percentages, or is it just oh they did better as a uh, whole? Again, this is, so some of this is just based on surveying students, so it's just like sure. reported less, but it, the grades are up about ten percent. Oh wow! Okay, there yeah. you go. So so a letter grade with you know light bulbs and funky wallpaper and cool carpet. So everybody's gonna get A's if you buy my lighting system. That's right. <laughs> or at least one better grade. If they got an F, they'll get a D. Yeah. Uh, Light <laughs> Fair calls for speakers in the Design Synergist series. So Light Fair getting after it. With, what does that mean? Design Synergist. Yeah. So it's talent and innovation design. Uh, I, I don't know what a synergist does. <laughs> All right. Well, we, check it I out. I think we have to go and ask. They, they create synergy in their yeah. design. That yeah. must be what it is. Yeah. LRC study recommends circadian lighting for Alzheimer's patient patients. Uh, new investigation saw improvements to sleep habits and less agitate uh, agitation across a number of dementias. That's always a, an area that they target for lighting studies like that, and it's great that they're getting some improvements on what they need sleep. Yeah. Uh, what everybody needs. Commercial observer on local law ninety seven. Breaks down the New York City carbon reduction plan. Yeah. Uh, POE market to reach $3.77 billion globally by 2025. So power over Ethernet for your stuff. POE, IoT, all this stuff is coming in hot. Yeah. Idaho goes dark. State leverages empty space to create a dark sky reserve. Begins astrotourism campaign. That's cool. Yeah. So they're cutting down light in an area so you can go see some stars. Yeah, well, Idaho is sort of famous for having nothing, so let's let's, yeah. let's make let's make that a feature. <laughs> let's keep it nothing, and then we can do this. Good yeah. idea. Uh, Phillips is going outside, so uh, the Phillips Hue big deal in home smart bulbs. Looks like they are getting developing features for outdoor use. All right, Oregon gets ready for zero energy. Say commercial code. It sounds similar to what Denver's going after. Uh, in this case, they're incorporating a specific ASHRAE set of standards, but yeah, oh, another net zero okay. building code. All right. Uh, Ontario greenhouses are getting L are being offered LED incentives. So the IESO is going to cover 30% of your conversion costs if you're a greenhouse operator in Windsor, Essex, Chatham, or Kent. There you which go, is greenhouses and getting... Well, uh, LED incentive, so grow houses. Grow what houses. Are they there, Scotty? Uh, I, I don't know, but I'll tell you that the Premier is an alleged hash dealer. <laughs> okay, well, we might have some of that going then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we got OSU study blue light ages cells. Fruit flies kept under blue lights die faster than flies kept in the dark or blue free. So now we're back to blue light is bad. Yep. What do we, we got? still don't Come know? On, somebody. We still don't somebody. know. That's the punchline this weekend. <laughs> Figure us out. Jeez. Yeah. All right. So uh, Virginia, whole state is updating the lighting on their highways and rest stops. Rest stops. Rest stops. Blah. Uh, which comes to nine thousand six hundred lights being replaced. I wonder what color temp they went with. Did they say that? They have not said. Mm, I'm going to have to make a trip to Virginia. Yeah. Jim Benya receives a Lifetime Achievement Award. Well-deserved, man. Benya's the best. We all know that. Yeah. Got a nice award. I saw that on his LinkedIn, so it's good to see that for him. It, if, if you haven't spotted it, the award is also a light. <laughs> it's got LEDs <laughs> in it. Perfect. He needs that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Limo, uh, Limo, Ohio to test smart street lights. So American Electric Power is going to provide 80 lamps for free for six months to test a bunch of features. Hmm. Sounds like a nice plan. Yeah. Let's test it for five years and see if it works for its warranty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wisconsin Town seeks 3,000 Kelvin streetlights. Now, I can get to Wisconsin real easy. New 4K streetlights put in Eau Claire puts retrofits on hold until pseudo. That's nice to hear. Eau Claire is about an hour and a half from me, and they put in 4K. Everybody didn't like it, so they're going down to 3K. Maybe. Yeah, they, 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 pa- they, they paused a project mid in after phase one. Uh, Jim Broderick has been named Edison Reports Person of the Year. He's a manager at the DOE. He's been there for two decades. And that's somebody that needs to get on to get a grip on lighting show there, Scott. We'll work uh, him out, huh? Yeah, we'll work on him. All right. Signify achieves carbon neutrality in five areas. Their Far East India, Indonesia, and Pacific Association are now compliant with their own sustainability program. All right, Soul Semiconductor go. partners with Walla Light. So that's another company I'd jumping on these Sun Like series. Historic Toronto Weather Beacon switches to LED, a 40 foot tall flashing array on top of the Canada Life Building. First upgrade since 1953. Yeah. The first one must have worked real well. Oh, yeah. It just involves someone going uh, 20 floors up with a bucket of bulbs twice a year. So somebody lost a job and another company lost in a, an ongoing order. Yeah, but there we go. Somebody got that LED. <laughs> right. uh, optical fiber ideas. So Electrical Contractor Magazine has some ideas for using optical fiber for lighting. Have some fun. Okay. Get, get, get arty with it. Yep, that's where it's going. Space-time bending metasurface makes light reflect in only one direction. So an ultra-thin material for laser and communication systems. It's important to guide light where you want it. And there you go. One direction. Yeah. Normally, you have to do this with really big magnets. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. All so right. Uh, in terms of new people or people moving around, we got Chuck Swadoba. He used to be at Cree, is now the innovator in residence at Marquette University. Max Light promotes Spencer Ballgard to CEO. Scott Layton joins US LED as the president. And Doug Schaefer has retired from Shadler, Shadler Yesco. There you go. So, Greg. On to another week. Yeah. On to another week. Did you know that the town of Biloxi doesn't do a tree this time of year? Why? They, they wrap a lighthouse in even more lights. Well, that's fun, though, isn't it? Just a glowing light stick. Yeah, it's just a big old light stick. And I only mention that no because treat. you mm-hmm. should be signing up for Nailed Con 2020 in Biloxi, Mississippi. That's right. I think it'll be gone by April, but that's when the <laughs> conference is, April 19th to the 22nd. Maybe we can know. ask where it was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll check it out. Thanks again. Catch you next week.